Okay, Second Chronicles 21. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, died, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. He had and his and he had brethren, sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephaniah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and precious things with fenced cities in Judah. Now look at that. I'm not saying it is, but that sure looks like what the Christian is going to get for doing well at the judgment seat of Christ. Well done, my good and faithful servant. A well done Christian will get gold, silver, precious stones, and a right to the millennial inheritance of a city. By the words of Jesus. I just, I'm not making any doctrinal application, but just think it's weird how the king has given the sons. And it looks like our king, the Lord Jesus Christ, king of kings, in the millennium, not the church age. Because we're going to be kings, the Bible says. But the kingdom gave he to Jerusalem because he was the firstborn. So he does proper. Now when Jerusalem was risen up in the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword. And divers also the princes of Israel. He's murdering his family. He's murdering his, his brothers. And the Holy Spirit doesn't say why, but he's murdered. He gets on the throne and he takes his son, I mean his, his brothers, and slays them. Jerome was 32 years old when he began the reign. And he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab. For he had the daughter of Ahab the wife, Jezebel. Jezebel is his mother-in-law. What a family to marry into. Let's look at chapter 18, verse 1. And this was taught by his father, Jehoshaphat. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab, relationship by marriage. Chapter 20, verse 35. And after this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined himself with Azariah, king of Israel. It's Jehoshaphat's fault. God, he knew that God did not want him in that family. He did not want him part of the evil Israel. And by him doing that, he has set forth his son to marry into that wickedness. Not one king in Israel ever got right. And the family reunion, the, oh, we got to go see the unsafe family. And it caused a problem for Jehoshaphat. His son said, hey, my dad liked it. My dad did it. So I'm just going to go marry into them. And it angered God. A division even found in the New Testament, in the church age of the Christian, is what Christ and Billy are. We have to have a division. We have to have a separation. I know what, what preachers say out of the pulpit, but that's just to make the congregation, you know, not throw the preacher out. You witness to them, you tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they don't believe, you move on to others. When the people rejected Jesus Christ, he didn't stay and have fellowship with them. He left them. Plain and simple. So he marries the daughter of Ahab, the wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Howbeit, the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he may, had made with David, and he promised to give him light to him and to his sons forever. Now, that's a rest assurance verse right there, of all rest assurance verses. When God says it is so, when God makes a promise, when God says something, he is going to abide by his word. At this point right here, it is come to the conclusion that God is so angry with Jerome that he's ready to just wipe them all out. And he did that with Moses too. He's like, Moses, back off. Let me wipe them out and make a new city, new children of you. And yet the word of God, God said to David, your, your children are going to sit on that throne. And right now is I can't destroy this, these people 
because the promise I made to David when the Bible said, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. How do I know I have eternal life? No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. That you are a son of God and you cannot be disinherited. I am surely saved. I am surely not ever going to lose my soul, ever lose my, my salvation by God through Jesus Christ, but God, because God said it is so. Another Bible verse of the word of God, that God cannot, will not, is unable to lie, is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Is that not a remarkable word by God? He said, you confess it with the right heart, with the right spirit, I will forgive and forget. Oh, what about this sin I did? Did you confess it? Yes. Don't make God a liar. He said, I'll forgive. I'll forget. So when those sins do come up, and you put it under the blood, say Satan, say flesh. God has already forgiven me. God has already forgotten it. Because it's under the blood, I confessed it. God wrote it. God said it was so. Verse 8. And in his days, the Edomites, that's Esau, revolted under his dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Now they're leaving Israel. They're leaving the power under Israel. As uh, Isaac told Esau in that, that secondary uh, blessing to Esau, one day you're going to lose that, that yoke. You're going to lose that burden of being under your son. It's starting to happen. Then Joram went forth with his princess. He killed some of them. Verse 4. And his chariots with him and rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him. They were encircling him and the captains of the chariots. So he's killing the Edomites. He's killing the Esau. So the Edomites revolted under the hand of Judah unto this day. They got angry. They made it more angry that you have killed us. You, you, you're trying to wipe us out. You fought us. All we did is revoke. It'd be like, here we are, 50 states. Let's say Utah says, you know what? We're leaving the union. We're having nothing to do with you no more. We're going to be our own people now. We're going to set up our own president. And, the, and the, the, the 49 states come in and just wipes out Utah. And leaves a redman of them. And the redman of the Utahites would be fine. Definitely not going to serve you guys now. Definitely not going to be part of you. After what you just did. At the same time, also the Libna revolted under his hand because he had forsaken the Lord God his Father. He is losing territory. He is losing control. He is gaining enemies because he has made God an enemy by forsaking God. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah. His father was taking them down. He's adding to it. And, and, cause, made the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Like, Jehoshaphat made the, the children of Judah and, and, nation, and the people around him the Jew, made them serve God, made them come to the temple, made them do right, made them obey God. His son Joram is making them sin, making them to do the opposite, making them to have high places instead of the temple, causing the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compel Judah there too. He is making the people sin. He's making the people turn away from God. And notice that word fornication there. That's the first time fornication shows up and it's not a sexual sin. Now fornication is a sexual sin. But the first time a word shows up, you remember the rule is, when the first time a word shows up in the Bible, it sets the standard. The first time fornication shows up is when you have gone against God, you have forsaken God, and you've gone for other gods. You are committing adultery against God the Father. You are committing uh, premarital sex against God the Father with gods and Satan. For the Christian would be smooching and hugging 
Satan when we're supposed to be espoused to Jesus Christ, our groom. And there came a writing to him from Elijah. Elijah didn't come himself, he sent a writing. Thus saith the Lord God of David. The one that spoke to David, the one that, oh, if I didn't say it to David, you'd be in trouble. If my words and my oath to David is what keeping you alive today. If the words of Jesus Christ and the words of God the Father says, you are saved, you're forever saved, forever to be a child of God, I am by the word of God. Because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, thy father, and he did right, and he also sinned, but his heart was in the right place, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, he did good, he did right, then he sinned, he got disease in the feet, sought the doctors instead of the, the, the Lord, but has walked in the ways of the king of Israel, and has made Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring. There's another sexual sin, but this is not a sexual sin. They are selling themselves out for the worship of gods and devils and Satan. Notice how two sexual sins, and they are sexual sins, but they are in relation not to sex, but the worship of fallen gods, the worship of Satan, the devil, and his fallen angels, and their gods. Like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, that would be Jezebel. And Revelation speaks about her, God has given her bed and the whoredoms and the place to repent, she repented not. God calls Jezebel's religion a whoredom. And also has slain thy brethren of thy father's house, we already read about that, which were better than thyself. <laughs> Elijah comes in with this letter, you know those, those brothers you killed? They were much better than you were, brother. Bet you that angered him. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, Judah and Jerusalem. Why? Because they sin. They can tell the king, no, we're not going to do it, and they'll face consequences. Like the apostles in, in the book of Acts were jailed, were whipped, were killed. They had the right to say, we're going to serve God and not you. We're going to serve God, not Jezebel. We're not going to go to Baal. We're not going to go to Asherah. We're not going to have Easter service in our church. We're going to serve God. Decorations or no decorations. I'm going to serve God. Behold the Lord with a great plague will... Behold with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. The plague is going to be upon his family and their goods. And thou shalt have great sickness, a great sickness, by disease of thy bowels, your insides, your guts, your, your, your uh, organs, unto thy bowels. Now see, that doesn't mean a verb of your body. You know, when they say bowel movement, that's not what it's talking about. That's talking about inside, a bowl. Inside of you, bowels would cover kidneys, liver, spleen, uh, gallbladder, guts, intestines, blood, nerves, bones. Until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against him, Joram, the spirit of the Philistines. Oh, here comes the Philistines back again, the enemies. Of the, they've been gone for a while. They've been quiet for a while. And the Arabians, there's Ishmael, that were near the Ethiopians. Well, Jehoshaphat got a battle and the Lord conquered the Ethiopians. A little anger in there, I guess. And they came up to Judah and break into it. They broke through the city and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house. There's the goods of verse 14. 
the great plague of goods is they're going to break into the city, they're going to break into your house, and they're going to take it. That's the plague of the goods. And, this, and his sons also, and his wives. Oh, there's a plague of the wives and the children. So that there was never a son left him. They killed his wife, they killed their, his sons but one. That is, in verse number 14, the great plague of the children and the wives and the goods. The goods are gone, the wives and the children are gone, and they probably, for the people, killed some Judah, killed some Jews. Save Jehoiaz, the, the youngest of his sons. So they saved one son. And, after, and that seems to be another thing going through this the kings of Judah. There's always one son saved. It's not the end of hearing about that one son saved. And when Jesus Christ is the son, and Jesus Christ is set forth of the tribe of, of Judah, set forth to be the king of the kings of the Judah of Israel, there's a time that Herod says, kill all the babies. And he killed all the all the babies from two years and younger, but there was one that survived, Jesus. So when you say, when you see that, oh, everyone's been killed but that one, that pictures Jesus Christ. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incur incurable, that's the first time that word shows up, disease. He's got terminal disease of the bowels. Now some say that it, some say that it's colon cancer. I, I don't know. And it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of two years, now look at verse 15 at the end, the sickness day by day, every single day for two years, 30 days, 12 months, 360 days a year, 720 years, if my math is correct, Day by day, with no relief, he suffered for this disease. And not once do we ever see him like Asa, seeking God. I guess Grandpa Asa taught him something, too. When you're in pain, don't go to God. And it came to pass in the process of time, at the end of two years, his bowels fell out by the reason of his sickness. Now, whatever reason, I don't know what happened. I don't know what the circumstance, but something gushed out of him. Where? I don't know. But his insides came out. His insides became his out. That must have hurt. That must have caused great discomfort. So he died of sore diseases, plural. Now, maybe it was a cancer. And it started and just grew and grew and grew and grew. But I can't tell you it's a cancer. And his people made no burning for him like the burning of his father. No celebration. No time of, 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 as the other kings. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign. He reigned in Jerusalem eight years. And departed without being desired. No one cared about him. No one, oh well, he died. Who cares? Didn't like him anyway. Howbeit they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the king. He doesn't even deserve to be buried in the national cemetery of our kings. Bury him in the city, but bury him over there. Not going to go put no flowers on his grave. Who cares? He's dead. Happy be it. What a shame. What a life. What an ending. It don't end good when you rebel and rebuke and, and forsake the Lord. It don't well live to you. 